If you're stuck choosing between Android and Windows Phone, you better know what the best of each has to offer. On the Android side, the jury's still out on the Samsung Galaxy S4, but we do have the device that's going to beat it to market in our studio today, the brand new HTC One. And even though it's five months old at this point, we still consider the Nokia Lumia 920 the king of Windows phones. So let's put them head to head. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is HTC One versus Nokia Lumia 920. We've already reviewed the international version of the HTC One and compared it to the HTC Droid DNA and Apple's iPhone 5, and we've posted some exhaustive camera comparisons at Pocket Now as well. To see those and to make sure you don't miss anything else HTC One related, follow us on social media and subscribe here on YouTube. In this comparison, we're going to be covering build quality, specs, UI, the camera, and a few test notes. In terms of build quality, these phones almost couldn't be more different. We've always given the Lumia 920 a bit of flack for its extra paunch. At 10.7 millimeters, it's a little thick, and at 185 grams, it's heavier than most any modern smartphone out there. By contrast, the HTC One is a sliver of a device at 9.3 millimeters in the center, narrowing to even slimmer dimensions on the sides. And despite its all-metal construction, it weighs in at just 143 grams. That metal is aluminum, by the way, broken up by injected polycarbonate on the backside and machine-drilled holes for the front-firing speakers above and below the Gorilla Glass protected display. The Lumia 920 also packs polycarbonate, a lot more of it, because its entire body is cast in the sturdy stuff. Glossy or matte finish, the Nokia phone can take a pounding, as we demonstrated in our Lumia 920 durability report. That helps make up for its added heft, as does its pure-view camera, which we'll get to later. In terms of the design, Nokia employs many more curves in the Lumia than HTC does in the One, from the Nokia smile to the rounded sides to the display's Gorilla Glass, which almost looks ready to spill over its edges. There's also the total lack of flair on the Lumia's backside, which is completely blank with the exception of the camera cutout. These phones are the product of two very different design approaches, but there's a lot to like in each. Whether you prefer the added convenience of a hardware camera key on the Lumia or the IR blaster on the One, there are nuances and touches that captivate in the build of both of these devices. That's true in the specs as well, and that's especially visible in terms of the display. There's no real contest here. The One is packing a powerhouse of a screen, shoehorning a 1080p SLCD3 display into a 4.7-inch footprint, resulting in a ridiculous 468 pixels per inch. That's astounding pixel density for a smartphone screen. Many would call it overkill. And indeed, you do have to squint to even try to make out pixels. By comparison, the 4.5-inch IPS LCD on the Lumia 920 is only 1280 by 768, producing a pixel density of only 332 ppi. Yes, those are huge quotation marks we're putting around these onlys. The 920's display is still perfectly suitable for most users, and it's gorgeous in its own right producing colors that are a tad warmer than on the One and very readable in daylight. Where the Lumia suffers by comparison is in side visibility, and of course the difference in resolution is highlighted by Windows Phone's larger rendering of text and icons. You'll have to get your own eyes on each of these screens to decide for yourself which you prefer. The One's display is amazing, one of the best we've ever seen, but the Lumia's is still nothing to sneeze at. Under the hood, there are significant differences in CPU and memory. A dual-core Snapdragon S4 at 1.5 GHz on the Lumia, and a quad-core Snapdragon 600 at 1.7 GHz on the One. There's also 1 GB of RAM on the Lumia to the 2 GB of RAM on the One, and for storage, both of our units here pack 32 GB. But the One is also available in a 64 GB variant. The Lumia is not. Neither device offers additional expansion by way of memory cards, so you have to make do with what's on board. And the batteries on each are also sealed in. 2,000 mAh on the Lumia and 2,300 mAh on the One. Charging them is a different procedure, too. Both devices include micro-USB ports, but the Lumia offers Qi-based wireless charging as well. The HTC One does not. But it counters for that deficiency on the connectivity side, adding 802.11 AC to the Lumia's more typical ABGNN Wi-Fi support. We've been through the differences between Android Jelly Bean and Windows Phone 8 quite enough at this point, but the salient comparison here is between Sense 5 and Windows Phone. 
It's pretty easy to draw comparisons between HTC's Blink feed and Windows Phone's modern UI concept, and to be sure, they include similar elements in terms of square blocks containing images and text. But that's really as far as the comparison goes. Microsoft's modern UI is minimalism taken to the extreme, and it pervades the OS. Blinkfeed, with its image-centric approach and erratic tile sizes, is much more akin to Flipboard, and it's confined to a small section of the phone. You can choose not to use Blinkfeed by sticking to the more conventional Android experience most of the time, and while HTC has really changed the flavor of Jelly Bean in some significant ways, the comparison ultimately comes right back down to Windows Phone versus Android a Spartan stock experience, or a busier customizable one. The question of which you prefer remains philosophical. Other considerations, like fluidity, aren't as big a deal anymore, because the HTC One has the power to keep the experience lag-free, while the Lumia features an OS famously optimized for smoothness. App launch and resume times tend to be a little quicker on the HTC One, so if you're a real speed demon, you'll want to think about that. Also, Android offers some old favorites, like text wrapping in the stock browser. And, of course, if you don't like that, you can download a new browser very easily. But once again, we've fallen into the platform question, the question you should have answered before choosing devices. The bottom line is that each of these devices runs its particular platform with extreme alacrity. As mentioned before, we put these cameras head-to-head in a previous feature at Pocket Now, which contained many side-by-side examples and which we encourage you to check out. Since then, though, the HTC One has received a notable update to its camera software, so we decided to briefly put it to the test against the 920 once more. Results were similar in our brief rematch, with both cameras delivering very good performance in standard lighting conditions. With default settings, the One delivered much warmer tones than the Lumia 920 overall, and HTC's aggressive exposure adjustment remains in evidence when tapping to focus in the viewfinder. Both units had trouble with brightly lit subjects and darker surroundings, but each also excelled in more balanced, low-light situations. The Lumia still produces more authentic shots on the whole, but either of these smartphone cameras certainly does well enough overall for day-to-day social media photos and even the occasional high-profile landscape or portrait. The front-facing camera is another story. Nokia's front-facing camera resolution might not lag too far behind the One's 2-megapixel shooter, but its much narrower field of view and the dusty lens problem reported by many Lumia owners on forums across the internet make the 920's FFC a real dud compared to the One's. Those holes above and below the HTC One's display aren't just for show. Boom Sound might be a somewhat tacky brand name, but it's accurate. In terms of media playback, the One's sound quality absolutely destroys the Lumia 920's. Let's be clear, the 920's speaker isn't bad, necessarily. It's a tad on the quiet side, but it's about average for a smartphone. HTC's boom sound blows it away because it's so far above average, it's incredible. Bass is deep, the sound is rich, and it's loud. After a few minutes of this, you wonder how you ever managed to listen to your media on another device. The One's audio superiority doesn't stop at playback. Phone calls are also much better than on the Lumia, on both sides. Our One provided fuller, less tinny sound in the earpiece, with fewer compression artifacts. In a quiet room, callers said we also sounded much better and clearer on the One than on the Lumia. Some of that might be due to the network differences between AT&T and Sprint, but based on our own and other reviews, we have to give most of the credit to the One here. HTC's Sense Voice is much more than just a brand name. We have more observations on the Sprint version of the HTC One, including battery endurance and benchmarks and more detailed notes, in our full review at Pocket Now. The One certainly has a lot going for it, but it hasn't left its Windows Phone competitor too far behind in terms of sheer performance. Both of these devices run smoothly and deliver a bevy of features in a robust, beautifully designed casing. You'll be a winner either way you go here. The only question is whether you prefer Microsoft or Google as your mobile platform provider of choice. Plenty more coming on the HTC One and other devices, so stay tuned to Pocket Now. In the meantime, throw us a like if you like the video, drop us a comment if you have something to say, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.